So um, now the, the lady over here, she asked, what happens when we don't have electricity? How do we, um, now that we've got some of the supplies, how do we use some of these things to, if, you know, in our home? Now that we're home, we've got everything there. How do we cook our food and do some of this stuff? One of the things that I found last year that's one of my favorite finds, besides our solar lantern, because we tried it against our Coleman, and he told you that story, was my solar oven. And I got this um, almost two years ago, and my husband being the engineer that he is, um, he saw me trying my little solar oven outside, and he was laughing at me because it was the middle of February, 32 degrees outside, and he said, that's not gonna work. And I said, well, you know, the website said it was. <laughs> I'm gonna try it. So I got my pot, I put a big butternut squash, I actually had the bigger turkey size one. I got a butternut squash and a big, huge potato, and I stuck them in there, put my turkey bag over there, because that's what it says to do. It actually contains your heat, gives you a higher temperature of, of cooking. And I stuck that out there in the middle of the winter, 32 degrees, and I thought, okay, I'm gonna come back a couple hours later. My husband came home later on for lunch, and he got his little, he's got a little laser gun. That's a little play toy of his, and it's got a little digital readout that when you point it at an object, it will give you the temperature. We got it for camping. You know, it's a guy thing. So um, we thought, you know, it'd be nice to know what the temperature of things are when you're, you know, out. And um, <laughs> so he comes outside with his little thing. He says, okay, let's see how your little thing's working. And it had this little, um, thing around there and it was all puffed up and tight which means obviously there's some heat being generated in there right so he points it at my little um, turkey roaster my black 230 degrees 32 degrees outside in the middle of February and he was shocked his jaw dropped open and he said oh well <laughs> and he was quite surprised so I bought four of them now why did I buy four so I can have a main dish, so I can have some potatoes or a vegetable, so I can put my water in my stock pot out in the morning, and I can have warm water by the end of the, end of the day, and I've had to use no resources, no propane, no electric, you know, if I don't have the electricity. So, because you want to, at this point, conserve your resources. A lot of the things that I have researched, a lot of websites say the problem and the mistake that most people make is they use up all of their resources in the first few you know, weeks or you know, short time of the crisis, and it lasts longer than they expect it to, and they are left with nothing. So use something that has free, and, you know, free resources. So I, I got this kind. This one is pretty flimsy. You can see it works great as long as there's no wind. So we actually got a cardboard kind in. We just got them in two weeks ago. And um, so we now have a cardboard that's a little bit stiffer, that's got this shiny stuff on it. And I don't know if they have any in the store, solar ovens. There's quite, there's a big variety of solar ovens. There's this little fold-up kind, and you always, you need the black pot to go with it because this absorbs the heat, and you put this up on, a, you know, even some rocks or some block, wooden blocks so that the air goes around it, and you can cook your food. I froze a casserole, made it in this dish, froze it, got it out to take to a family reunion a few days later, and stuck it out in my, just like this, up on a little thing, and four o'clock in the afternoon, I put a towel over it to keep it warm, beautiful enchilada casserole. And all I had done was stick it outside for you the afternoon. Turkey, uh, bag around it as well? Yeah, uh-huh, yeah. So, there's a big, you have, yeah, because you need, if you stick it on a cement and it was cold or something, you would not get the heat generated from the bottom. You need to generate heat from all sides. No, no, no. You just put them underneath here, set it on there. So you put it on a cookie rack? Yes, cookie rack, trivet, something like that, okay? So, um, this folds up like this. So there's a big range of different kinds of solar ovens that you can get. You can get the big kind that has a seal, a thermometer, 
you know, the lid that shuts down. And those are about $200. If you've got the budget, those work just like an oven, easy to use, go get it. Um, and they are here. They're here, right down here. They've got a good display right down here of the different options that you've got for solar ovens. But if you don't have that type of a budget, there's, you can even make this. We made these for my ward and a couple of other wards. You can get the pattern online and you can use cardboard and tin foil. It takes a bit of doing because you have to expand your, your um, pattern so that you can get the big enough size and then you can make it. Or you can even get those sun visors that you can put in your window of your car. You get two of those and you can put it down in a thing and support the back of it and you can do the same thing that way. It's totally a preference up to you. So um, we, do have, we do have these, but if, you know, whatever's easiest for you, whatever works. Um, there's lots of different options and they've got a whole display. So go look at those different ones and do whatever fits your budget. Um, we do have the, um, the different things for the water. So there's lots of different options there too. The Berkey, that's one price. And then you've got, we've got the other. When we started doing this, you know, the economy wasn't like it is now. You know, things were fine and people were ordering Berkeys all over the place. But now that budgets are a little bit tighter, we needed to find some things that were less expensive that people's budgets could fit. And so these are some of, some of the things that we have found and we're simply um, giving you some other options. And whatever fits in your budget is, is best for you. So on sunny days, blue days, you can only use the solar. On the days that you didn't have a nice blue day, what would you use? They have those little tiny propane um, stoves that are just a one little burner, and you can use those. They also have alcohol burners, stove in a can. How many of you have seen the stove in a can? I have made about four of those so that I can, you know, the alcohol is already in the can. I've got a larger can than the smaller can on the inside that has the toilet paper, the alcohol in there. Then I've got the matches in the bigger can that's got the air vents around it. So you've got some... So you've got lots of different options for days that, you know, if they're rainy or something, your solar oven's not going to work. But you've got some other things that you can use. And there's just the single burner with just a little tiny propane thing. Um, also, I've got a good supply of charcoal for my Dutch ovens on days that I don't, can't use my solar ovens too. So what you do is you just use your resources, you know, go through mentally and see which ones you would be able to use on the right days and just be smart about the resources that you have and when you use them so that you don't run out all of your resources at the very beginning of a crisis, whether it's an earthquake, whether it's the pandemic, or anything else that might come along. Because um, the things that we're doing here are not just for the pandemic, this is for any type of an emergency situation. Because if it happens on a large scale, even an earthquake, you're gonna be doing the very same thing that we've talked about. Everything that we've talked about, you would use the same way.